While the watering restriction is in place to encourage customers to curb their consumption, the drought level one surcharge is in place to encourage customers to be more mindful of that usage. In addition to making the park functionally safer and more enjoyable to visit, it is also the hope that these improvements will help revitalize the park's reputation. As the city sets about this work, they want people to be aware that in order for the areas to be slated for repair that most need it, they're going to need assistance from residents. Since partnering with the city in 2017, Concha Valley Paws has seen a live release rate of 60 to 70 percent per month and their volunteer force has nearly doubled. Really good news for dogs in need of a loving home like Everman. The clearest the case gets is at its beginning. It was at about this spot along Highway 277 near Bront from which Brandon Lawson placed a 911 call to Coke County Sheriff's deputies. Shortly after that, a truck driver placed an additional 911 call describing his vehicle and saying that there was a stranded motorist. Shortly after that, Coke County Sheriff's deputies arrived at the scene to find Lawson's vehicle abandoned. San Angelo has seen not one but two bridge strikes recently, which highlights a surprisingly common and growing problem. So on an average day through Tom Green County now, we are seeing, and in our district, in our 15 counties, we are seeing approximately 80 to 100 of these oversized, overweight loads. And that's a tremendous increase that we've seen in recent years. And so TxDOT says incidents like the one at Bell Street could become more common. None are good, but some will be merely cosmetic and not require major repair to the bridge impacted. An example of that is the strike to the US 67 bridge over Southwest Boulevard, in which no citation was issued to the driver. The incident that we had at Southwest was a little different. It was a 181 foot load, but it was going very slow. And when the driver tried to make that U-turn under Southwest, instead of going under the bridge, he got stuck. Other bridges like the one at Bell Street will not be so lucky. That driver was cited by DPS. So the Bell Street Bridge was over US 67 was struck by an oversized load on early Sunday morning, May 12th. And since that time, we've had our bridge inspectors come out and look at the bridge. They've determined that an 11 foot section or one beam on either side of the bridge had to be removed. And Reese Albert has been working very hard this week with their crews to remove those two bridge beams. To accomplish that, the crews first had to remove all the decking. Then the beams were cut away from the three diaphragm attach points. After that, the beams were lowered away, cut up, and will soon be taken for recycling. Now that the bridge beams have been removed, we're going to rebuild the sidewalks temporarily in this area so people will be able to walk across the Bell Street Bridge and also ride their bicycles across the bridge. In the meanwhile, our engineers are working on plans to rebuild that section that was removed. That is expected to take about one year to complete. In the meantime, a single lane each way will typically be open to vehicles. Victor Glenn, KLST News. February 22nd is National Margarita Day across the United States where the margarita is the most common tequila-based cocktail ordered. In Texas, Margarita Day can take on more significance due to the closeness of all the ingredient sources. It is something we take a lot of pride of here, and we do everything from scratch. So basically what makes it popular here, I think, is the regional aspect of how close the natural ingredients are. A lot of the agave is sourced from Mexico. Um, you know, obviously your fresh produce is going to come from the same uh, climate. It's almost like a farm to table aspect. While the origin of Margarita Day is less than clear, the drink itself can be traced back to the 1930s, gaining popularity after being featured in the December 1953 issue of Esquire magazine. Popularity surged again after Jimmy Buffett's song Margaritaville came out in 1977, and the local bars feel the rush and offer endless specials. Uh, it brings a lot of attention to bars, especially bars that are crafty. Uh, it's one thing to do like a special, but it's something to really go somewhere where it's inspired. Um, it's not necessarily the bargain that I'm shopping for, it's a quality. With many celebrants teaming up to enjoy National Margarita Day, it's no surprise that social media can also play a role in how people express their interest. Well, actually I found out that today was National Margarita Day through Facebook and all of my margarita peeps were sharing that with me through Facebook and I shared with all of my peeps this morning I really wanted a margarita. Happy National Margarita Day! And if you venture out in search of a classic mix or a crafty creation, enjoy responsibly. Victor Glenn, KLST News. San Angelo native Kenan Clark has had two major passions since childhood, travel and the church. 
Now, as an adult, he combines those passions as well as his understanding of digital and social media to bring his family's message of hope to many across the United States. So I think I got my love of travel when I was about 13 years old. Uh, my family and I, we were living in San Angelo and we sold everything that we had. We bought an RV and we all loaded up and we traveled the U.S. for about a year just visiting churches. We went all over the place. And I think, honestly, that's where my love of, of travel and wanderlust began to form. After coming home to San Angelo from school in Dallas, Keenan began working with his parents, both pastors themselves, and soon began using the power of social media to expand the impact of his message and accept invitations to speak all over the country. Now, after three years of extensively traveling the United States, Keenan just returned from his first trip abroad to Israel, where he and other social media influencers like Sam Calder, as well as religious figures, took in their deeply historied surroundings. There was about 28, 30 of us that went on the trip. Um, we we had the people from Duck Dynasty, and there were people who, um, in some way or another, are famous on social media. We just all loaded up on an airplane in New York City and uh, went over to Israel, and they gave us the experience of a lifetime. We, it was a historical, educational, inspirational um, um, trip. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. Got so many photos. We camped in the desert. Uh, we had dinner on the Sea of Galilee. We went on a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, we ran all over Jerusalem, the old city. We saw the garden tomb. We saw Golgotha, where Jesus died. Um, we were in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, we hung out in Tel Aviv. Everything. It was. It was. It, packed eight days. Since returning from his trip overseas, Keenan's belief in the utility of social media and his love of the power of travel to open one's mind and connect people to one another has only been strengthened. Victor Glenn, KLST News. Keenan Clark, a San Angelo local and young adult pastor with Celebration Church, has recently returned from a trip to Uganda, Africa. Some will recall we spoke with him after his first trip overseas last summer after he and other religious figures and social media influencers took an historical tour of Israel. This time abroad, the focus was less on the place and more on the people. The Ugandans, they're extremely enthusiastic. They, they really have a, a drive to go after uh, the things that they feel called to and, and get it done. And I, I loved it. It didn't really take much prodding. It didn't take much hyping up. They were hyping us up most of the time. And it was, uh, it was honestly really inspiring. While abroad, Keenan joined forces with Reaction Tour, a group focusing on empowering those who attend with life skills and religious themes. This year's program, a summer camp focusing on leadership skills and messages of hope. I taught a leadership class where all these Ugandans who felt like they were going to be involved in some sort of leadership uh, came, and me and another person, uh, Rachel Griffith, we, we taught them leadership principles, and at the end of the class, they even got a certificate. Keenan says that certificate can help with employment prospects as the course covered much, including public speaking and business writing. Given his extensive experience traveling the country and now abroad, Keenan had these words to share about the importance of travel and just how easy it can be to accomplish. I think adventure awaits just right outside your doorstep. And maybe it is just walking along the Concho River or going to Stango's and grabbing a slice of pizza with your friends, or it is jumping on an airplane to go see some part of the planet you've only ever dreamed of. Um, I think that's, that's honestly where the real adventure begins. And it starts with those baby steps. Victor Glenn, KLST News.